Oh, no. So uh, we can start. Uh, welcome everybody to the webinar of today. Uh, the speaker of today is uh, Jean Roland, and uh, he will talk about rare collapse and build up of uh, wall turbulence in a hierarchy of uh, uh, models. Uh, as usual, I introduce uh, him. Uh, I introduce the speaker for uh, first uh, minute, and then I leave him the. Uh, the stage. So, uh, Jean Roland uh, has been an uh, assistant professor in, in uh, at Ecole Centrale de Lille and uh, Laboratoire de Mécanique de Lille since uh, 2020. Uh, he has done a PhD in uh, Laboratoire d'Hydronianique de l'Ecole Polytechnique from uh, 2009 to 2012, followed by a uh, postdoc at the Institute of uh, Dunon in Air, uh, Denise, from 2012 to 2014. He has held a teaching research position at the University of Frankfurt, uh, Institute Pépin uh, in Poitiers, at, uh, and uh, an uh, uh, ENS uh, de Lyon uh, from uh, 2014 to 2020. His research interest covers uh, transition to turbulence in wall flows, back and instability, and uh, extremes in turbulent and geophysical flows, and internal gravity waves in uh, stratified rotating flows. It's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, uh, Jean Roland for, uh, for uh, his uh, uh, speech of today, for his seminar of today. Uh, Jean, uh, I stop sharing my screen. You can uh, start sharing yours if you want. Okay. So thanks for the uh, invitation and the uh, presentation. So, um, so goodbye. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Everyone, so I'm going to, uh, as I said, I'm going to talk about the rare collapse and buildup of wall turbulence in the hierarchy of uh, models. Uh, and so I am Joanne Roland and I work in the Laboratoire d'études de Lille. We, uh, and I, I am hired by Ecole Centrale de, de Lille. So first I will give an overview of uh, the, this presentation. So I will talk about the transition to wall turbulence to give uh, to, tell, to talk about exactly what kind of uh, events uh, I'm go going to try to compute and try to present in this presentation. Then I will talk about the rare event simulation methods uh, that I uh, use to compute these rare transitions in a uh, world turbulence and that have been used in, uh, in, in many other examples. And then I am then going to present uh, these type of calculations in models of uh, world flows um, well, uh, that I've studied some years ago. And, and then I will talk about the collapse of turbulence in tranquil flow. So in uh, applying these methods to actually uh, Naturally, turbulent flow. Then uh, some uh, ongoing work about the buildup of turbulence in the plant flow. And in the end, I will talk about the uh, conclusion and perspective uh, of this work. So just uh, then to present uh, transition to turbulence in a uh, in a wall flow. So for wall flows like uh, plant flow and some some uh, things like uh, pipe flows, and to some extent like to, to boundary layers, there is a very similar uh, phenomenology uh, phenomenology of the transition to turbulence. Uh, in these flows. So a wall flow like plane quad flow, which is, which is uh, sketched in, uh, in the picture in the left. So basically, which is a flow between um, two parallel moving uh, plates. So it's controlled by the Reynolds number of, 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 the, of the flow, which is the ratio between, uh, let's say, the uh, advection and the, uh, and the viscosity, which is given by the uh, distance between the two plates, the, the velocity of the plates and the, and the kinematic viscosity, viscosity. And the peculiarity of these flows is that they are linearly stable for uh, all Reynolds numbers. So they, they don't transit to turbulence, like, for instance, a, a thermal convection. And what happens is, act, is, is actually that you need uh, some finite amplitude perturbation to trigger turbulence in these flows. And as a consequence, there is a bistability between laminar and turbulent flow. So in phase space, so basically you, you, are, you have the, the laminar flow which is stable and then somewhere else in phase space you have turbulent flow, but also you can have this pi stability in space. So this is illustrated in the picture in the middle. So as soon as you have uh, that uh, Reynolds number, which is about approximately uh, 330 for plant wave flow, you can have sustained uh, turbulence uh, or sustained to some extent turbulence in the form of, of oblique bands, which I sketch here and you have uh, in black here, this is, so this is the kinetic energy of the, uh, of, of, the, of, the tur of turbulence. So you have black zones where you have no turbulence, uh, red, uh, yellow zones where you have turbulence, and you have this coexistence in space, you have this coexistence in phase space, and you have this multi-stability of 
uh, laminar flow and turbulent flow. And then if you keep increasing the Reynolds number, you have turbulence that invades the whole domain. But technically, you can you still have this bi-stability in phase space. So you have multi-stability uh, of, of this phase, of these uh, two states, and this leads to uh, the, the possibility of switching from one to, an, to, an, to another, and you have several kind of events of multi-stability. So here I present them that has that has they have been uh, computed in a uh, in numerical simulation or with specific techniques in the in the in the, in the recent times. So on the left I show some some contours of, of velocity. So what is computed here is let's say some optimal perturbations that would lead to maximal energy nonlinear energy growth uh, in in the hope that if you take this uh, optimal initial uh, condition you perturbate slightly. You let it evolve and you go toward a turbulent flow. So that's one, one first kind of event of bistability is that if you are laminar and you give just the right initial condition, or if you get some forcing, then you can trigger, you can go travel toward turbulence. But you, you, this cannot happen if you give something infinitesimal. You have, and I either have to give the right initial condition with a finite amplitude or some forcing. Another kind, two other kinds of actually of, of events, they are illustrated in the right. So in the, mm, in a spatial temporal diagram on the right. So here you have, it's, a, it's in a simulation of a pipe flow. So you have the length of the pipe X and times T. And what you see uh, in colors are actually turbulent puffs. And you can have several kinds of events. You can have the splitting of two turbulent puffs. So the, uh, uh, in the green ovals, or you can have the decay of a puff. So you have three other kinds of, two other kinds of events, that three events in total. You can go from a laminar flow to turbulent flow under some, uh, some forcing. But if you are turbulent, you can naturally decay so, so that you can go uh, to turbulence and then back to laminar. And if you have, uh, let's say, localized turbulence here with a puff, uh, then you, this puff can split and then leads to complex uh, spatial topological dynamics and also the uh, quasi steady laminar turbulence coexistence. So these kind of events, they have see, been seen by many people and there are many, there are many references on this uh, for, the, for the last uh, 60 years. It is quite possible that Osborne Reynolds uh, 140 years ago, uh, had seen some of, some of these uh, also. But the main difficulty when you study these events is that basically you have to wait a typical time before they, they, they occur. And this uh, typical time can be very large. So this is illustrated here in the graph on the right. So you have the logarithm of the waiting time as a function of the radius reference number in the model of pipe flow. And you have the uh, diamonds are the waiting time before you have the collapse of turbulence here. And the crosses are the waiting time before you have the splitting of two of one puff into two. And when you can see that the waiting time before collapse of turbulence uh, increases faster than exponentially when you increase the Reynolds number, so that it can become very very large when you have higher and higher Reynolds number. Yeah, apparently, it's not infinite, but it can be ex exceedingly large. And meanwhile, if you reduce the Reynolds number as long as uh, some puff type structure can can exist, the, it's uh, the, the time you have to wait before it splits. Is longer and longer. And since it, had, it has been argued that basically the threshold for sustained turbulence in infinite domain was where these uh, two uh, times crossed, well, you want to be able to compute them on a large enough uh, range of Reynolds number to be able to see where they cross. And uh, in some cases, well, this, the, the two curves had to be extrapolated because you, there were no val available value because the, the time that had to be waited in the NS were too long. So here you see that it's logarithm of the waiting time, so natural logarithm. And you have the, the, some values which uh, vary, by, vary by a lot of order of magnitude. So it's, it's, it's fairly long and it's hard to, to, to get. So that's, the main, that's one difficulty. And so to illustrate why it's, uh, it's complicated and why the, the, we, we have a problem with these very long times. So I show, the, show something uh, a bit different. So this is from uh, geophysical field dynamics. So this, this is from 2D two dimensional turbulence. So we have two examples of what happens in these two dimensional turbulence forced and when you put some differential rotation. So what you create are, are jets. So here they are, see, they are seen in the vorticity with uh, uh, things that are negative and positive in, in terms of vorticity. And you can have two states of, of, of jets, one set with three jets on the, on the top and one set with two jets on the, on the bottom. And then if you let the DNS evolve, and this DNS presented here, uh, performed by Eric Simonet took, uh, I think, at least one month to, to run. And you have uh, here, the, so on, on the top right, it's the vorticity average uh, along the direction EX, so, which is called the zonal direction in GFD. Then you can have a job go from two jets to three jets, from two jets to three jets. You have this multi-stability. 
and you have this uh, basically uh, long simulation. And if you uh, take the time series of the Fourier modes here to see more the multi-stability, then you have in blue, so the Fourier mode three to represent the three jet state and Fourier mode uh, two to represent the two jet states. So in, uh, in blue, I've, I've more or less sketched the waiting time between two multi-stability events, so which, which is uh, fairly long and which, which is several uh, thousand time units, rescale time units in that case. And then, well, you have to resolve this time because if you want to sample several events, otherwise you cannot evaluate T. But then if you do numerical simulations, you also have to resolve a much shorter times, like in orange, the time it takes the flow to switch. And in, in the green, the typical turnover time uh, of the flow. So you have to, re uh, to, to resolve in your simulations a very large range of time scales. And this is what makes the, the, this, this, case, this situation very large, the, very difficult to, to study in simulations, is that you have, result, you have to resolve both uh, types of time scale, which are very different. So this uh, leads us to a, to a problem because what we, want, what we want to do for when we study this kind of uh, multi-stability events, so in, in the case of wall flows, the collapse of turbulence, the splitting of puffs, and all these kind of things, we want to have a precise estimate of the wee, mean waiting time before these uh, events uh, occur. And we have also in, we have also want to support enough realizations of the dynamics leading to the events to study the so to study the story of uh, of the of the events to have an idea of what happens at the beginning of an event to maybe uh, to to compute what what is, what is uh, getting more and more popular that we call precursors to maybe have an an idea of what happened just before the events so that we could, we could maybe predict it and so basically to sample all this to have an idea of what are the physical me mechanisms before the multistability. What are the statistical properties of this, uh, these events? If there is a scaling law for the wing waiting time, what could be the physical explanation for this uh, scaling law? So we want to support that. But then if we want to support that by, uh, by numerical simulations, then it's, it's, it becomes quite difficult because you have to resolve a lot of order magnitudes of time scales to do a classical DNS. And this is, it is extremely expensive. And uh, basically we, we want to bypass this by bypass this problem, and how do we bypass this? Well, we uh, start using something that uh, comes actually from uh, different fields of, of science. Actually, it comes from the, the, the chemical chemistry, where they have the same kind of questions that they ask, that they want to study rare events for uh, for the, to study the kinetics of, of, of chemistry. And we use what we call, what we call relevant simulation methods. So before I present the relevant simulation method that I've used. Uh, to present the result, the the the, the result I, uh, that I show in this presentation, I'm just going to uh, to set a few uh, notations and vocabulary to, for this uh, to present these events and the, and words that I can, that are going to reuse throughout this presentation. So I sketch uh, on the on the right here. You have this little uh, sketch um, that we uh, reuse to talk about the, this event. So we, what we want to do is to do multi-stability. So what we do is sketch in what we call phase space. So for those who are not familiar, it's uh, let's say uh, either we take all the degrees of freedom of the flow, or sometimes we take, we also take reduced uh, phase space. So for instance, with Fourier modes amplitude, for the case of uh, of the multi-stability objects, or uh, components of kinetic energy, which have uh, which, which I used a lot for for this presentation, we have a reduced order, order space, and this reduced order space, we can have then a subsurface or a subvolume. For instance, A here can represent turbulent flow. And B here can represent laminar flow, and we want to study the, 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 the collapse of turbulence. So, try, so a realization of the dynamics that go from laminar to turbulence. So we can represent them with uh, these kind of curves in the phase space. And what we can represent, for instance, in black, is the first passage tra trajectory. So it's the dynamics that naturally st starts in, in turbulence, and then have some excursions until it go it crosses some surface and go directly toward laminar, the laminar flow. So this is a first pass trajectory, and the mean wait, the mean time before the tra such a trajectory occurs is is called a first a mean first passage time. So in that case, the mean first passage time before we go from laminar to turbulence is the lifetime of turbulence. And one also important part of this dynamics is the very last last part of the dynamics. So it's the, the part which is sketched in red here. It's it's what we call a reactive trajectory in obvious reference to uh, kinetic chemistry. So the, the part of the dynamics that starts from the, let's say the turbulent state, crosses some above surface, so uh, has a small excursion out of turbulence. And instead of, of becoming turbulent, fully turbulent again, it go all the way back to the laminar flow. 
And this, this is the last part. And this is something that we will endeavor to systematically compute because it's going to uh, show us what happens when turbulence collapses and help us study the mechanism of, of, of collapse, collapse of turbulence. So now after setting these uh, notations and, and vocabulary, I will move to the specific methods. So this is, uh, so there are many methods to study uh, relevance. And uh, so that, so that each method uh, has its advantage and disadvantages, and they are more or less adapted to one case or, or, or another case. And one uh, type of method that I've been using recently uh, are basically uh, based on uh, cl um, clone uh, dynamics. So the method is called adaptive multilevel splitting. And the advantage of this method is that it can uh, exponentially accelerate computations, in particular when the event becomes extremely, uh, ex extremely rare. So really, this really helps us bypassing this issue of having to wait an extremely long time before we sample a, a relevance. We can actually greatly accelerate the dynamics. And how do we do this? So we, I still make on the right here one of these sketch in uh, phase space. So what we do is we, that we have enclosed dynamics of the uh, uh, enclosed realizations of the dynamics, and uh, basically that that we, that are going to be used to realize to produce n independent realization of trajectories. So and uh, along the, the the course of this computation, we are going to estimate the probability that this uh, reactive trajectory occurs and the mean waiting time before it occurs. So how do we do this? So we use uh, one crucial quantity, which is called uh, the observable or the score function or the reaction coordinates. And what it does, so it takes, for instance, a velocity field and it assigns it a value typically between zero and one. And uh, if we want to study the collapse of turbulence, so the value assigned to a turbulent flow will be zero and the value assigned to a flow which is lamina is going to be one. And the closer to lamina the, the flow is, so when I take this velocity field and I put it into this score function, the closer to one, the score function is. And what, basically what we do is that when we have computed some trajectories, we compute the uh, score function of the trajectory and we try to find the point where the score function is maximal. And what we do is iteratively, which is sketched in the right here, we have some examples in blue of trajectories and a trajectory which has the smallest score function is removed. And in order to keep the uh, uh, to to create trajectories that go further and further toward the laminar state, uh, in in that case, we uh, and to keep the number of trajectory constant, uh, I rebranch a new trajectory on one of the two other. So this gives me the and I slightly perturb a bit and I have a, a new realization of the noise if, if, it's, if it's a stochastic dynamics. And this gives me uh, the purple trajectory, and iteratively I do this. I uh, compute the score function of the trajectories, I find the one that has the smallest excursion, I suppress it, I rebranch it, and iteratively, I can then create n reactive, uh, reactive trajectories. And it can be shown that this actually can lead to unbiased computations of uh, the probability before switching and, uh, and computations uh, without uh, errors of uh, the, the reactive trajectories. And actually, this, this, this has the, the advantage that's actually the, this is done in case st stages. And case scales like the logarithm of the mean waiting time. So if you have a, a waiting time which expo uh, increases exponentially, which is big, the events are getting rarer and rarer, the number of iterations that you have to do, the number of times you have to select and suppress trajectories in your in your method, is uh, going to scale like the logarithm of this waiting time. So if the the, the waiting time ex explodes exponentially, the number of iterations only grows linearly. So it's uh, actually it's quite uh, makes the computation quite cheaper. And it's, uh, it really, it's really a proof to, to study uh, rare events, and in, in that case, uh, the collapse of turbulence. So what do, what, what do, where do I apply it? So I start in this presentation by uh, the simplest uh, possible case. So I'm going to talk about a conceptual uh, model which represents the main mechanisms of uh, laminar turbulent coexistence and is by stability. So what, how is it constructed? So this model, which has two variables, x1 and x2. So x1 is going to represent the velocity streaks, so what, which is one component of, let's say, uh, traditional turbulence. And so basically, well, from the self-sustaining self process of turbulence, you have the velocity streaks here represented by x1. And x2 represents here uh, uy or uz, so all the streamwise vortices. And in the self-sustaining process of turbulence, the streaks, they are, they are instable with respect to the streaks instability. This creates one normal, uh, normal vorticity, which is tilted 
uh, uh, to create streamwise vortices and the streamwise vortices they recreate the streaks. So these two, two, two variables here, they are they, they, in this in this uh, simplified model. They represent these two components, and the two equations for the models they are represented here. So in the deterministic part, so forget about the eta parts at the moment. You have uh, dissipation with one over r, though, so the, which represents the Reynolds number. Then you have this x two here in the equation for x one. This actually represents lift up by the streamwise vortices. And then you have uh, energy conserving nonlinearities uh, with uh, these two terms. And these two can help you then represent the transition to turbulence because in that case, you have a, a, a base flow, uh, which is x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero, which is always linearly stable. You have the effect of lift up and you have the, uh, the, the possibility that to, to create they said this non, this non trivial uh, state, which was in turbulence, which is sketched in this bifurcation diagram on the right, to have these two full curves here, which represents uh, turbulence that arise from the balance between uh, lift up and nonlinearities and dissipation when you increase the Reynolds number. And here I'm going to study multi stability in this model first. So, for, to do this, I will add some noise here, controlled by beta. And uh, this is a, a white noise. I'm going to study in, in that model either the collapse of turbulence, so when I go from these two full lines to the green lines, or the buildup of turbulence, so when I go from the green lines here to the two full, to these two full lines. And there are several kinds of noise that you can study, with the, which are controlled by this parameter A. It can, be, it can be purely additive, it can be multiplicative. And this, this uh, model has been proposed by Doshan Manville uh, maybe 25 years ago, and I've studied more extensively in, a, uh, in, a, in an article published a few uh, years ago. So what you can do in this model, what you can do is use uh, IMS to compute trajectories that go from turbulent states in this black. So if you see this picture on the right, from this black spot to there, this green uh, spot to laminar state. So you can compute rare trajectories from turbulence to laminar. You can compute also trajectories when you make uh, the forcing smaller and smaller of the laminar state that go from laminar to turbulence. So you can compute the trajectories. And you can see actually that they have a structure which can be predicted by, the, by, by the, the, what we study in the theory of multi-stability uh, multi in stochastic systems, is that they go toward the saddle point here in black. For instance, the, 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 the collapse go from this turbulence uh, state to the saddle point to laminar state. And similarly, the uh, build-up of turbulence, they go from laminar to the saddle point to the turbulent state. But actually, so this is something that uh, is done in general. But what can be done actually in, in this small uh, model is, it can, is that it can be worked out analytically if one notices actually that the mode X1 of the uh, strix is slaved to the mode of the vortices. So you can eliminate it in, a, in the stochastic system. So it's, it's a bit involved, but this can be used to uh, calculate the structure of the trajectories of collapse of turbulence. And it actually tells you that the more you increase the Reynolds number, the more the trajectories of collapse, they consist in First, a decrease of x2 with uh, x1 more or less constant, then a decay of x1. So really, first you kill the vortices, then the, the, the streaks decay. So this is what happens in this model, and this is how you escape the uh, sort of uh, self sustaining process of turbulence that you have in this model. So these uh, computations, they can be used to uh, uh, calculate the mean first passage time before collapse of turbulence in this model, either by IMS and also uh, with, with these, uh, these analytical methods. And what can be seen is that in both cases, they tell you that the, this tells you that the, uh, this waiting time, it grows like the control parameter beta that you could see in the noise here, uh, which comes here exponentially, times a function of the Reynolds number. So this is illustrated in the picture in the, in the right. The logarithm of t grows linearly with beta, and, you, uh, and the Reynolds number is larger and larger in this model. And you have this function of the Reynolds number, and it happens to be uh, a fine. So this can be predicted by theory in this model, and this can also be um, uh, computed uh, uh, numerically using the relevant method. <clears throat> and the, okay. And this uh, computation is also still using the fact that this, let's say, physical uh, mechanism that uh, in this model first you have to drive x two to zero, then x one relaxes. So these are the things that you can extract from, uh, from this uh, small uh, model. So then if you increase the, the, the complexity 
of the models because I, I, I wrote a, that I studied things in a hierarchy of model in the, in the title. So if I go to a slightly more complex model, so uh, uh, let, let, I, I then studied uh, a model which was uh, which is in an extended uh, system. So here you have this length of the of the pipe. So it's a model of pipe flow proposed by uh, Gwen Barclay. So you have the length of the pipe L in this model, and the Reynolds number L, which is the other control parameters, and then some other uh, parameters that has to be fixed so that the model gives the relevant dynamics. And it has two functions in this model: two function of time and space. In that case, two fields. One which represents the streamwise vortices, which is called Q, uh, and one which represents the, the streaks, which is called U. And you have these two coupled equations that, that, that gener not, not only generates uh, non-trivial states, but also the shape of the turbulent puffs if, if R is between uh, approximately maybe one and two. So it's, it's a reduced Reynolds number. And the way it's constructed that it's an advection diffusion model, and the nonlinearities are such that the phase space as the uh, right face portraits to, uh, to have the natural dynamics of Q and U in, in the form of an ex ex excitable system. So it's been ex used uh, extensively, so first by, uh, by, by its author and then by, by, uh, by other authors to study transient turbulence. And what, uh, what, I've did, uh, what I've done is actually use this model to study the rare collapse of turbulence in these dynamics, so in the stochastic version of the model. So uh, how I've been, what I've been doing, well, you can study the collapse of uh, isolated puff, and, uh, and I've done this, but what is actually even uh, rarer uh, is the co collapse of the laminar turbulent coexistence. So you start, you let the flow naturally evolve toward uh, a situation where you have co uh, coexistence of, 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 uh, of laminar and turbulent flow. So you have uh, a given average number of puffs in the flow. So the dynamics are, are fairly complex when you are toward the, this, the, the, when you are near these states. And you can ask yourself, uh, can this state where you have uh, several puffs uh, collapse, to, to, collapse to, to, to a laminar flow, and how much time do I have to wait before this happens? So this is illustrated in the um, spatial temporal diagram on the left and in the center here. So in that case, in these two spatial temporal diagrams, uh, I represent the variable uh, Q, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, and I start from a situation where I have uh, several puffs, which, which is uh, the average number of puffs that you can find in this situation. And I uh, use the, the, the IMS to compute the trajectories of collapse. So when you are uh, at the Reynolds, reduced Reynolds number slightly above the threshold of uh, sustained coexistence uh, in an infinite domain, what you do is that you can see actually that you collapse the, the full puff by puff. So then you are, and splitting of puffs is not, so common that that, that splitting is, uh, happens and, uh, and refuels the flow, but as soon as you slightly, uh, as soon as you increase the Reynolds number, then uh, splitting become, becomes too common, and turbulence collapses by uh, co uh, by uh, the collapse of the synchronized collapse of all the puffs. So this tells you that in this model, actually the laminar co turbulent coexistence it's it's uh, transient. So the, the the mean waiting time is going to be very long. It can only be reached uh, with a reasonable cost. Uh, by using these, these kind of relevant methods, but still you have this uh, this possibility of collapsing turbulence in the uh, in, when your Reynolds number is larger, as illustrated in the spatial temporal diagram in the middle, where you have the synchronized collapse of all the puffs. So what can be also studied in this model when you have an isolated puff, it's the collapse of this isolated puff, and also the splitting of this isolated puff. So the picture picture of the the, the, the graph at the very beginning was computed uh, for this kind of study. What is also possible to study is how do you create uh, a single puff starting from a laminar flow? So here you have uh, the logarithm of the intensity of turbulence here in this special temporal diagram on the right. And you see that if you, uh, you put a forcing on the laminar flow, which is a vanishing variance, and you ask the, 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 to study the, uh, the, 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 the creation of a turbulent puff, what you, what you get is first uh, the, that you create a germ of puff which increases in amplitude until it locally reaches the typical amplitude that you have in a, in a turbulent puff. And then it puff, this puff also extends in size until it has the, the natural size of a turbulent puff. So we can study these events in this extended model uh, using the, uh, the relevant method. And this makes these computations much faster than if you were performing a DNS. So you can access much more physics and study the, the mean waiting times. So I'm going to show here 
in this news next slide, the mean waiting time before the collapse of turbulence in this, in this model of pipe flow. So I've studied this uh, starting from the laminar turbulent coexistence. So in domains which are larger and larger, so in this figure on the right, so domains that were larger and larger that have more and more cuts, in, let's say in the quasi, uh, quasi steady state. And so and you study well, you see, well, what is the, 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 the mean waiting time before turbulent collapses. And what you can see is that in good approximation, the mean, this, mean, good, this mean waiting time increases exponentially uh, with the size L. So you, you have uh, that log of T is in good approximation linear with L. And you can study this with increasing Reynolds number. And you see that this function, which gives you the rate in this exponential, actually uh, grows with the Reynolds number. So it's a very reminiscent of what you had in the, in the in the very simple model with two variables. So so you have this f of r, and like in the model of two variables, this f of r is approximately uh, a fine. So it's not as uh, as clean and in, and in, uh, as in the simple model because you have larger uh, numerical uncertainties. But uh, still, this is uh, you still find the same a fine dependence, and actually you can make sense of this uh, this comparison is that if you uh, average about the whole uh, pipe, uh, what you have in, in, in the model uh, by Barclay, you find the, the same kind of noise as in the, in, as in the conceptual model, and where beta has the same uh, role as L. So the two models are consistent in that. And this hints uh, also that you have basically this dependence of mean waiting time uh, in, in size and Reynolds number that comes from the, the same, probably, possibly, the same mechanism that you had in the conceptual model, that, that first you have to collapse the vortices, and then you 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 uh, you, you let the the, the the streaks decay. So this is what happens in models. So let, let's uh, look to more uh, recent things which can be done in actually uh, actual simulations of plane well flow. So go from models to uh, to an actual uh, turbulent or let's say weakly turbulent flow. So what do I look what, what 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 do I look at? So I want to look at the collapse of turbulence. In a rectangular domain, so which here you can see uh, color levels of the streamwise uh, velocity for a typical turbulent state, which is obtained uh, by DNS with some constraint on, the, on its uh, kinetic energy. And I want to uh, to see exactly how does uh, can this uh, this turbulent flow collapse to a laminar flow, uh, and uh, how do, uh, how does it happen? Uh, that's the typical route for the collapse. And how much time do I do I have to to wait? So this, for, to ask this question, so I can make very lengthy the DNS and recall the fields. And I can also greatly accelerate them using uh, the rare event methods. So there was some work to adapt the rare event methods to on a deterministic system because they are designed to work well on stochastic systems. So, so there was some work to adapt them to deterministic systems. So the, the, that was um, uh, a technical uh, problem, but this, this has been overcome to be able to focus on the physics and uh, the fluid mechanics of collapse of turbulence in that case. So here in this uh, original plane, and what happens? So you can co compute uh, trajectories of collapse of, of, of turbulence, so which I illustrate here in this slide, where you have a time series of kinetic energy during a, a trajectory of collapse computed. So in the same domain as the former slide. And here you have a point in uh, during the, the collapse, which corresponds to the two uh, color levels which are seen in the center for the streamwise velocity and in the right for the spinewise velocity. So the spinewise velocity here serves as some sort of, uh, as some uh, as some proxy uh, for the velocity for the streamwise uh, vorticity. And the advantage is that here I look at two fields in uh, in a plane which can be computed uh, without too much trouble in experiments. So where uh, you make PIV in a horizontal sheet, and you get so in two, two, uh, two, in two dimension, these two components of velocity. So this, this to make uh, images that can, in a sense, could be compared to experiments. And what happens when you have this collapse of turbulence? So what happens when you look at the field is that's actually locally. The, so the whole, the, the, the laminar hole is actually forms locally. So here you can see in, in UZ that that's, it's, uh, that's almost completely decayed. And how does it form locally? So it's, the hole is going to be all, all, all along X. So it's not going to you're not going to have some turbulence at some axis and a lamina uh, be, uh, behind or, or in front. So it, it's, it's all along x. It's localized in z. And what happens in this hole is that u z collapses first. So the, the the vortices collapse first, and then the streaks 
slowly decay in that hole. And then you have, let's say, some interface between the, the, the quiescent here, the laminar here, and the turbulent there. And in, in this interface in Z is then going to move uh, at, its, at, 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 at its pace. So that's the laminar flow has invaded the whole domain. So here you find locally a mechanism which is similar to what, you, what, what, what could be found in models. So that first you, uh, there is a decay of the vortices, then a decay of the, of the, the switch. So this is how the self sync process is also exited in this model. So this can be found in this simula simulations. But similar things can have also recently been seen um, Uh, Johan, uh, we don't, we lost you, we don't hear you anymore. Uh, so just a second, I try to, to contact the speaker uh, to I try to contact Shohan to, to tell him that uh, he should rejoin the meeting. I don't know if there is a problem with uh, his internet connection. Uh, Uh, okay, he said that uh, it was a problem with his internet connection. He is going to reconnect with another one. So it will take just a few minutes. Okay, here we are. So So this oh. So he is, I think Joran is trying to reconnect. There we go. Maybe he needs to connect his mic still. Sorry for the inconvenience. Huh?
So I'll try to recontact him once again to say that we cannot see him. Uh, I don't see him anymore. Okay, there we go. Probably he's he's getting reconnected now. So okay, so hopefully I'm back online. Yeah, we we, we see you. I name you co-host once again. Uh, so there was some uh, some disconnection. So I had to change network. Uh, sorry, everyone, for the for the inconvenience. So I I think we are we are good now now, right? So you can, uh, Johan, you can uh, uh, try to reshare your screen. Yep. Uh, so sorry for the interruption. Uh, so now I'm back online. Hopefully, so what I was talking about this. Um, uh, what could be observed as a mechanism for collapse in the, in the territory computed by uh, using IMS in this. Square, square root rectangular domains for the formulation of laminar holes in, uh, in these domains. And actually, it's very reminiscent of how, if you leave, uh, let's say, laminar turbulent bands isolated, the way they grow and they decay, they also uh, grow decay by the sides. So there are, there, there are possibly some, uh, some perspective works uh, to be done in larger domain for, for that case. And what, what's also interesting, what you can do with AMS is that you if you suppress, instead of just one trajectory, but several trajectories at each iterations. So first, you can uh, parallelize the algorithm, and uh, which and then you can use it on a uh, on, on larger computational center, see, which also gives you some acceleration in the computations. But you can also uh, have uh, at the last stage when you suppress a uh, proportion of trajectories, you're going to keep at the last last at that stage and full of uh, uh, non-reactive trajectories that were almost relaminarizing, but then went back to turbulence, and the one which basically were the closest. To relaminarizing, but then uh, went back to uh, turbulence. So, if you observe these trajectories, so with time series of kinetic energy here on the left, color levels of the uh, streamwise velocity in the middle, and uh, uh, streamwise, uh, no, so uh, spanwise vorticity here on the, the right. So, what you have here is that you have an excursion toward low values of the kinetic energy. So you spend a long time in a, in a very low plateau here. Then the kinetic energy regrows uh, there, grows back again. So, it go, uh, so this this flow goes to a laminar flow, spending a long time here, and then becomes turbulent again. And you can study how this happens. So again, you have the formation of these laminar holes here, where you have uh, the, the black dot in, indicates instead of time, where you have the fields there. And, excuse me. Yes, but I use the university. Uh, yeah, so there's still some troubles with the network, I think. Sorry about this uh, this issue, um, but I'm still online. Um, so, the, so you can study these tra trajectories, uh, how you form a, form a hole and how the self-sustaining process uh, plays locally, but you can study the, the, the process of decay of turbulence and the pro process of regrowth of turbulence and see if it's... Uh, Reversible if, 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 if turbulence decays and regrows, let's say in space, by the same processes. So then this can be uh, uh, this, can, this can be uh, this can be studied. So it's uh, so you you can have access to two kind two kind of information like actually when, when you, you do this. So in order to uh, compare DNS and IMS and also see how things uh, happen in, in phase space and compare them to what what happens in a, in conceptual model. So here I can show the, all the trajectories of collapse computed by uh, IMS, where I have like in that case one thousand trajectories, and uh, we at a much a quite larger cost. I had one hundred trajectories coming from from the NS here to make this plot on on, on the right. So what I've done is that I've, for all the uh, trajectories, I have sampled the kinetic energy contained in the strix and uh, more or less the kinetic energy contained in the streamwise vortices, and 
um, look at the av average of uh, ek uh, yz as a function of ekx over all the trajectories to make the full lines here and also the variance to make the dashed line to basically show some sort of tubes in which the turbulent flow is when it collapses so typically the turbulent uh, tra trajectories that go from turbulent to lamina is going to be around the, the full line and in between the, the dashed lines. So first to uh, validate the, uh, the IMS computations. So to have so see that for most of the trajectories, you're going to have the same, uh, same line here. Uh, you're going to have the same uh, things uh, on the trajectory. So you, are, you have a validation of the computation. And I'll go back to full screen. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and yeah, also, what, what was it? Uh, yes, so the, there are comings and goings. Um, yeah, so to, to first validate the, the computations and also to see that actually the, the vortices collapse much faster than the streaks because if you see here in this in these scales for uh, ek yz you can uh you have a decay of maybe in logarithm by uh six when uh, the ekx collapse uh, decays by uh two so you have a much fa faster decay of ek yz than e ekx so much faster decay on average of the vortices than, than the streaks and basically you have the same kind of shape of of trajectories this is reduced space than, 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 than very, very similar to what happened in the models. And what, what could be seen in the trajectory is that first you have a, a failure of omega x and then of ux. The way it exits, exi exits the uh, self sustaining process of turbulence. And also, this is used to see that you are compute uh, in good approximation more or less the same trajectories when you do IMS and DNS. Because uh, there was the risk of uh, committing uh, errors by, by use of uh, IMS, and you can you check that this does, does not happen. And so uh, to, to study the, the effect of adding small perturbations where, where that you, when you perform, uh, when, when you use uh, IMS, to make sure that the trajectory separates, so to validate the computation and to study the physical mechanism, to see that in India you have this much faster decay of the vortices than the streaks. Uh, yes, and another thing that uh, can be uh, looked at is uh, so when you remember these states, uh, so what you can do with these, these states that do not collapse, you can compute the, 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 the field which gives rise to the smallest, uh, so the largest re re reactive trajectories in these non reactive states to have some sort of uh, turning point of the dynamics in between the lamina and the turbulent uh, flow. So typically, this kind of uh, that on this type kind of the trajectories, you find the the the, the states that that uh, leads to the maximal uh, maximum of the re uh, reaction coordinates, and these give you some sort of um, estimation of some sort of turning point between lamina and turbulent flow. So it can be examined in these two picture on this slide. So on the left, the streamwise velocity, and on the right, the streamwise uh, vortices. And this tells you again the same, same, same story that basically the way turbulent collapses is by collapsing, by first killing the uh, streamwise vortices in streamwise elongated holes that uh, decay much faster than the, than the velocity streaks. So you can see here that the, the, the vortex are intense. So UZ is intense and the vortex the vortices are intense in, the, in this narrow band in Z here, while the streaks they are slowly decaying. Uh, the much uh, wider part of the space, so we can observe the dynamics and have an idea of the of the turn, turning point before the uh, before the, the, the collapse. So that's another information that that you can get get in, in this kind of study. And uh, so, and la last one thing about this uh, uh, these models and is to study uh, to see in this two spatial temporal diagram. So here the lines. They correspond to the streamwise average of few uh, uh, streamwise uh, average of ux and uz. Uh, I think it's the root mean average, so it's not exactly the average uh, of ux and uz. Um, so as a function of z and t. So because you see that the interface between uh, laminar and turbulent flow it's independent of x. So you average along x to see uh, where, how it moves 
with uh, Z, and you get these spatial topological diagrams. And on the left, you have a spatial topological diagram of collapsed trajectories, and on the right, a spatial temporal diagram of a uh, trajectory which starts collapsing to a laminar flow, but then in which turbulence regrows again. And what you see in this two spatial temporal diagram is that when turbulence collapses, it creates basically a hole. So well, and, and you have uh, the, the, the the in terms of hole, the the pla the place occupied by the stream vortices is actually much uh, smaller than the place occupied by the streaks. So because the the, the vortices decay much faster. So you create this hole and you have this, this process where first you kill the vortices and then the, 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 the streaks decay. But when what you observe is that when turbulence reinvades the domain, what happens later in time in the spatial temporal, temporal diagram on the right, well, the line, the interface between uh, quiescent and, and active for both the streaks and the vortices is actually the same. So you see that when you close the hole, you create the vortices and the streaks uh, more or less concomitantly. Con con we have this asymmetric process of uh, creating the hole, extending the hole, or closing the hole. So you have this, uh, this asymmetry between the two, the, the, the two processes, and this could be uh, um, ob observed and, and, and studied much more efficiently using uh, IMS in, in that case. So, uh, so there was some time um, lost because of this uh, break of network. So I will be very brief in st the study of the other kind of events in the, in the Navier-Soux equations. So <clears throat> to, uh, to give an idea of what's, what is done. So what you want to study the uh, development of turbulence starting from laminar flow under forcing of vanishing variance. So you look at the Navier-Stokes equation, the international tensorial notation with a forcing F here. And what you do is that you force in a, with this forcing, which can be a white, in, uh, here, uh, as shown by its correlation function, white in uh, in time and white in uh, it can it, it's chosen to be white in uh, in y, so in the Wallerman direction. And I choose also uh, in the direction kx and kz. Uh, the spectrum of the forcing is actually it's not white; it's actually uh, it's actually localized in kx and kz for the reason I'm going to to explain. And basically, you take a flow which is laminar. You input some forcing, you inject actually some energy, and you see how this flow can go toward a turbulence. And what is actually specific about the, these methods compared to when people study uh, minimal seed. So one thing which is, uh, or when people try to have the maximum response is that, well, you can have an energy budget and see that when you inject energy, you go from the situation where you are laminar, where, where you have a balance between energy injected and, uh, and dissipation. To the situation where you are turbulent, where epsilon is actually not very large, so you have a balance between dissipation and uh, extraction energy from base flow by the lift up, and you, act, you can express the energy injection rate. And to go quickly over what I do and what uh, I think is original about this approach is that what I do is that well, uh, usually what people what people uh, perturb the flow, they 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 have uh, seeds or they they have force uh, they have a forcing, which is uh, with the, at the same scales. With the same uh, typical uh, basically wave numbers uh, as the streaks and vortices, so basically which are for uh, the smallest kx and the smallest kz. And what I decide to do in this uh, kind of things is that I decide to input energy at other scales. So I give energy to the flow, and I don't I don't give specifically energy to the scales of the streaks and, uh, and the vortices. I give energy to smaller scales, and I, I and I give the, 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 this energy to the flow, and I tell it to figure it out do whatever you can with it and try to see if you can go to our turbulence. And if, and I ask actually, I ask whether where the, the, the modes to, to which you give energy matter and the shape of the spectrum, so by this function omega k, whether you give, uh, you have a sp flat spectrum here or a spectrum that decays, whether it, de whether it matters how you give energy. So what, the, what, what, what matters? The amount of energy you give on, or, or, or to, which, to which mode you give it, and to what uh, or, or to which component you give it. So this is basically uh, the, why, why uh, I was playing around with this. And this, I also do this by decreasing uh, the variance of this forcing to have something that doesn't perturb the turbulent flow when uh, when you have reached it, reached it. I use these relevant methods because otherwise the uh, the event is fairly rare. So anyway, and so I can illustrate what the, what kind of trajectory this gives in this slide here. So I have, I have sample many trajectories with the relevant methods as seen in this plot on the top uh, left here with the trajectories 
in this space of so ekx and ekyz the same uh, variables as for the collapse of turbulence and then i can also look at this um, sort of pdf uh, of uh, of where the trajectory goes on, on the color levels on the top uh, right here and what we do is actually in this kind of build up of turbulence the scenario when you input input energy when you you, are, you have a, a forcing is that well i give energy to modes which are certainly not that, that of the of the strix but nevertheless i give this energy to the flow and the flow decides to create this first this uh, these streamwise long gated tubes which are basically represented here on these color levels on, on the bottom left which are, are generated at the beginning of the trajectories and this uh, so here they are uh, they average along uh, x and those so the, the flow i give it energy at, at a scale different from that of the script the the, the streaks and, and nevertheless the flow gives it to create streaks and it creates these tubes and these tubes grow in amplitude during the trajectories until the shear layer here okay, that can be seen in these color levels on the bottom left between the blue which is uh, uh, low speed streaks and red which are high speed streaks at the moment which are occupying the whole uh, gap of, of the flow when this shear layer is intense int intense enough then the, your streaks are unstable with respect to the uh, streak instability and you create world of vortices that are tilted uh, by the uh, by the shear and then we can regenerate the, the streaks and then you basically do not need the forcing anymore you have started the self-sustaining process of turbulence as illustrated uh, by the contours of streamwise uh, velocity on the bottom right here which corresponds to the end of the trajectories so basically you give energy to the flows at fairly small scale the flow takes this energy and puts it into these uh, kind of tube, tube uh, structures and these tube structure uh, when they, they grow they grow they grow in amplitude until they are unstable with respect to these tricks and the instability and this can then trigger the self-sustaining process of turbulence so this has, this is yet an, another route to our turbulence and this has the advantage that basically this can be somehow uh, created ex experimentally because experimentally it's very hard to put uh, the very exactly the right optimal perturbation especially non-linear optimal perturbation because you do not have any additivity but you can still put some forcing at the entrance and uh, random forcing of very small energy and see what the flow does with your random forcing and you can have this comparison and then you can actually see uh, one thing what uh, i was actually looking at uh, is that uh, which is really in the curve in the right uh, so sorry for going faster because of the interruption is to see the logarithm of the this is the duration of the trajectories but I also look at other quantities how do they scale do they scale with the sh uh, with the something that controls the shape of the spectrum or actually uh, what i've put them as one over epsilon one over the energy energy injection rate it seems that most of the curves for different spectrum shapes and different for forcing or different components they seem to more or less collapse so the behavior uh, from what i've observed is seems to be more or less co controlled by the energy in the injection rate by how much energy do you give the flow rather than to what mode you give it or to what component you, gi you give the flow to, to what component of the flow you, you give this energy <clears throat> and uh, one thing that is to be noted is that in that case uh, the trajectories uh, can be fairly long on average compared to other uh, instances of relative stability they grow uh, very fast the, the duration they grow very fast with one of our epsilon and this is not very usual and this possibly related to the complexity of the uh, boundary between lamina and turbulent flow and one thing that can also be done which is interesting with this method i think is that uh, since it's you put some forcing so you're going to be able to to force the flow to cross the separatories between lamina and turbulent flow because you if you put uh, if you try to create a, an, a, an optimal initial condition so either it comes out of the optimization optimization process and, and, it's, and it is on the laminar side of the laminar turbulence separatrix or you perturb it slightly and then it's going to be on the turbulent side and but still with that method you can start from a laminar and then grow in amplitude and uh, go through the separatrix between laminar and turbulent flow and this you can detect where you you at what point you went through the separatrix by, by performing dichotomy so first by taking successive points in on the, on the trajectories and le, le, let them evolve in unforced uh, in unforced uh, simulations and see at what instant you have first uh, 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 a flow field that decays back to lamina and what successive instant you have a flow field that goes to turbulence. 
So where, where do you where do you cross this uh, separatrix on the on, on, on your uh, trajectory? And then from these two flow fields, perform a dichotomy to uh, to uh, then follow some path along the separatrix between la lamina and turbulent flow. And this is what is illustrated in the in the curve of kinetic energy on the on the right here. So first figuring out at what in, at what instance the separatrix is crossed, and then perform the dichotomy to have a, to to have a, a, a little travel on this separatrix uh, at the point where you cross it, to to really show that that you have this the, this crossing of the separatrix. So now I will conclude on what I've been talking about. So. so what I've been talking about is that I've looked at the multistability between lamina and turbulent flow mainly in a hierarchy of models uh, and then also, also in navier Stokes equations. So basically to, so, to, to look at how does the turbulence collapse in, in, in these models and in, 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 in plant-wet flow and how you can trigger turbulence from the lamina flow when you inject some energy. Uh, how I've, I've been doing this, well, I've, I've been using a relevant simulation method called IMS because these events, they are fairly rare so it's difficult to compute them by, mean of the, by means of DNS. So I've accelerated the, the computations using these relevant simulation methods. And uh, what can you do with these, uh, these uh, trajectories that you have computed, computed once you have computed them? You can study uh, the story of the collapse of turbulence uh, in, in, the, in the models and in plant cell flow, try to have an idea of what, what, what are the local mechanisms. And in all the cases, apparently what happens is that you first have a decay of the Streamwise vortices and then a decay of the velocity streaks. So these two stage, in, in, in a way, these two stage process. And so this is locally uh, and globally. So in plant quad flow, you have the, the collapse in a, in, a, in, a, in in streamwise corridors, and which are localized in the spine wise direction, and then they, ex they extend in the spine wise direction until the flow is, is entirely laminar. So for plant quad flow, the, my domains were not large enough. Uh, if you remember the picture in the beginning where you have this turbulent band, my domain were not large enough to have a whole band, but in the model of pipe flow, the domains were large enough to contain several puffs to study what happens when you have several turbulent puffs and, and, and um, see what happens when you uh, want them to, to, when they actually collapse, which is fairly rare. And what you can see is that when you have several uh, puffs, actually what happens, what, the, what, what is the fastest way to collapse them and the most probable way to collapse them is to synchronize the collapse of all the puffs together until they all relaminarize. And this gives rise to the mean waiting time before the, this laminar turbulent coexistence collapses, which actually grows exponentially with uh, the size L in the, in, in the two models. Uh, and the rate of this exponential is a function of the Reynolds number and seems to, in both cases, to be a fine. And this uh, size and, uh, and Reynolds de de dependence at least in the, in the simplest model, it can be directly related to the mechanisms of collapse where you have first killed the, the, the vortices and then the streaks. And also I've been uh, able to look at the, how do you create turbulence from the laminar flow when you inject some energy and see exactly uh, what is important when you inject, uh, the, when you do this energy injection, whether, whether, whether you have to force specific scales or whether you just have to give energy to the flow and the flow will figure out how to create the self sustaining process of turbulence. It seems to be the, 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 the later case. And it doesn't matter how you give energy, as long as you give energy. And the, this, this has also the advantage of generating trajectory that go from la, all the way from lamina to turbulence and cross the separatrix without um, having to, uh, to, 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 to add some additional perturbation. And also at the, the advantage of having something which is more or less uh, reproducible in, in experiments, because in experiment is very hard to put the right, the right shape of perturbation Meanwhile, it's, it's feasible to put so, some uh, noise at the entrance of vanishing variants, or to, or sometimes the experiment is perturbed so that you can measure the variance of the noise, the perturbation that is input on your, of your uh, new experiment. So you have these two advantages. And so in perspectives for, uh, for, for this study, well, uh, there is the, qu the question of how do, to calculate the collapse of turbulence in larger, let's say, rectangular domains of point point four. So how do I, how is uh, an actual band killed? Do, you, do I still create uh, a laminar corridor in X and then you, I, I have fronts uh, moving in Z? So that, that, does this happen in, uh, in this kind of uh, computation? And also for the, the buildup of turbulence, uh, if, I, if I do it in a larger and a larger domain, do I create a localized jump for turbulence that will then extend in, uh, in, in X and, and Z? So these are some... Uh, 
some perspectives for, for this uh, for this study. And uh, I then conclude, conclude here. And I thank you for your attention. And I apologize for the problem with the network. Uh, thank you, uh, Jean, for uh, for the very interesting talk. Um, and uh, I would say then uh, we can uh, uh, ask to the to the audience if there are questions for you, and so we can open the stage for questions. So, is there any question? Just feel free to unmute your mic or to report your question into the discussion. I will then read it out and. Uh, uh, Report it. Okay, then maybe I can start ask you, asking you a question actually. Um, the first thing I'm, I would be curious about is if with this uh, methodology you presented, if you basically get access to complex 3D, if you can apply this methodology to complex 3D to red flows, or if it's really too expensive for the time being? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, well, it's a, it's a matter, that matter of how you organize your, your, your simulations. But if you, the, the thing is, you, you have to be able to, uh, to store the states of several uh, turbulent flow that can be used for the cloning procedure. So if it doesn't take if it doesn't take you too much memory, then you can you can apply it. But if you already use the whole the whole uh, memory of your computer for just one uh, one simulation, yeah. then then it's going to be uh, a limiting factor. But for simulations that are not too greedy in terms of memory, then you can uh, so that you can keep in parallel several instances of, 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 of the flow. Then it, this becomes feasible. So probably not for the largest of the largest uh, simulation that people can uh, have been able to do in the largest computational center, but things that have uh, maybe uh, one thousand by one thousand by one thousand of, of this order of magnitude. I think this is uh, this is feasible to uh, to apply for this, this kind of thing. Okay. Kind of, uh, okay. Um... And following this question, I have another one, which could be uh, somehow could make the link between what you presented at the very beginning with uh, when you use this methodology with reduced order models. And uh, so my, my question is actually, uh, is there a way to uh, implement what you learn from uh, from uh, this from this method applied to neural sex equations inside the reduced order model, which can be better representative of uh, what happens in turbulence. Uh, I mean, better than what has been done so far. I mean, okay, so can we learn something which which can then be transferred into a uh, a model that that can be used to understand the transition or. So basically, maybe try to from the, the the trajectories. Maybe try to find some features from the velocity field that you, you obtain. Maybe you can you, you see try to, you can you see these collapse trajectories, and maybe you can try to learn some features from this because maybe you have specific uh, states that are important in the collapse, or specific states which are important of the splitting of, of puffs. So maybe try to from this. Maybe if you have very, very specific events, so maybe you can, when you want to create a reduced order model, you maybe want to see the typical dynamics. Yeah. So maybe if you, well, if you look at this picture here, you want to see this kind of picture mm -hmm. because, and, but you also want to see this kind of, uh, this kind of pictures. Yes, yes. So basically from, from this, maybe you can find this kind of, uh, yeah, maybe you can sample, this can help you sample uh, really what you need to not, not only be able to represent the typical, but also the atypical dynamics. Yeah, this can really help you because this can help you sample very specific kinds of dynamics that will be very rarely be, be, be observed uh, otherwise, but are still very important. So I think that you can, from these velocity fields, maybe you can learn the, the, the right features. So yeah, it can be, could be used uh, if you have a methodology that takes some velocity fields and create the reduced sort of model, this could help you sampling uh, specific parts of the, let's say, the phase space, especially those that are rarely visited, but still have a dramatic uh, influence. I think, yeah, it could be used. Okay, okay. 
so let's let's see if there is someone else who would like to ask a question. I might, I might ask a question. Can you hear me, uh, Francesco? Or uh... yes, 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 we can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I am uh, asking from uh, someone else's uh, because I cannot. I, I go. Yeah, there, there, there is. Uh, we have some trouble with the network, I, I guess. So I have a few uh, questions. Um, the first one was, uh, you saw that the time was an exponential function of the size of the system. Yes. Uh, I don't know uh, if this may appear obvious or not, but I was trying to imagine there could be a situation where as the system becomes bigger, the chances to move from one side to the other actually become smaller. Or vice versa. Is that, can you uh, say a bit more about this? Uh, what, what, so what, what happens is that when the system is bigger, the chances to go from turbulent to lamina are become, become, becoming smaller and smaller. smaller. So the, the, the time grows exponentially, and then the probability decreases exponentially. But there could be there could be other systems where, as the system becomes bigger, the chances to move to another system also increases. Uh, yes, this could this could uh, happen. Yes, uh, it's not an obvious thing. It's something specific to the system you're studying. Your flow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's specific to the system. Yeah, that's uh, that you have this because you basically, the, in a way, to, to if you are making this very simple reasoning, what you have is that you to have a collapse, you are forced to have an, the instance of an event where you you have in a synchronized manner this puff here and that puff here and that puff at the top. All these six puffs they have to collapse at the same time. So uh, you have to you have to you have these synchronized events, and it's it's uh, it's rarer and rarer when you have more and more puffs. So this is why, it make, in a way, this makes the thing grows exponentially with size. But if you have a different system where you, where the mechanism, the physical mechanism of your events becomes easier and easier when you increase the size, well, yeah, then uh, the, 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 the time would, uh, would, would not increase with the, with the size, it would be the contrary. You also talked about the time to go from one state to the other, for example, from turbulent state to laminar say. Yeah, so the, this is what I'm talking about, yeah. 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 And, this is, uh, so here you, you have the, the turbulent puffs and they all collapse in this special temporal diagram. So this time uh, to go from turbulent to lamina, well then it, it's, uh, so the, the, the mean waiting time that you have to wait, in that case, it grows exponentially with, okay. this, with, with, with the size. So you said mean waiting time, that's what I wanted to hear. Mean wait, so of course it, it will depend on the details of, the, of your particular turbulent stage, right? Yeah, uh, but what I what I do to try to avoid the, this uh, thing that depends on too much on the detail is that uh, I have a set of initial conditions in the in the methodology, and what I do is that I uh, just a sample, uh, maybe one hundred uh, or if I have one hundred clones, I sample one hundred initial conditions with only the constraint that the kinetic energy is is within uh, let's say uh, some value plus or minus uh, maybe one or two percent. So that they, they do not have too many constraints of what is exactly going on here, just that they have the kinetic energy that, that is typical of the turbulent flow. So, so that I do not have to have as, as little as possible an influence of the details. Okay. Uh, you, you have states where you have coexistence of laminar and turbulent in the same flow. So there will be turbulent patches with vorticity surrounded by flow without vorticity. So assume uh, yes. there, will be, there will be fluid elements with move from one to the other. Uh, let's see, so it's a bit difficult in that case because uh, you would need, uh, let's say, an average flow to transport them. And here the, 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 the organization of turbulence is such that you do not have an average flow that's, or it's, or it's very rare, that transports uh, turbulence in the spanwise direction. So, so you, you have transport in the streamwise direction by the, the mean flow. But if you have a laminar turbulence coexistence, uh, go back to the, this picture here, then here you have an average flow, which is actually in, uh, along the diagonal. So this actually transports things in the diagonal. And if you have actually this laminar turbulence coexistence, then you can create some advection toward, uh, let's say, toward the, the, the laminar patch of the, toward the laminar zone. So here, then you can have a communication by, by this mean. But, uh, but in, 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 that, in that case, one restriction of this, uh, this study is that you do not, you, because you do not have the laminar, uh, you, do, you start from a state which doesn't have a laminar turbulent coexistence. When you, when you decay, you do not allow 
to do not allow the existence of uh, of uh, average flow in the spinewise direction, so that there is no nothing transported in the spinewise direction. So you're saying there is no fluid element which goes from being laminar to vertical and vice versa. No, there, there is no trend. There, there is no fluid elements or no knots on, on on a large scale. So maybe uh, uh, in a very localized manner because of some fluctuation, but not something that is globally transported. So not not in the in the in these uh, in these pictures. But it would happen in a localized manner as a fluctuation, right? What? It would happen as a fluctuation in a localized. Yeah. yeah. So suddenly something with vorticity stops having vorticity, the fluid elements kind of. Yeah. But, but uh, this is fairly different from actually from these situations. In these situations, then you have a global transport in the, the spanwise direction. So you have really a, a large, or large uh, in, uh, compared to some other things, uh, mean flow that transport things. And if you have a hole, for instance, in, in that band here, if you imagine that you have a black hole here in, in a band uh, there, then you still have from the sides of the band some transport, some average transport that could. Uh, brings fluid particles from the turbulent side to the to the to the laminar hole. So in that case, this could happen. If, uh, so that's why one reason that would be uh, interested in uh, looking at rectangular large domain is to be able to see if I still create this laminar this uh, laminar hole and uh, what, what what is the effect of the of the fact that this I mean flow can refuel can bring uh, fluid particles can bring uh, Agitated fluid particle toward the, 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 the laminar hole. So, this is one of the things that's. Uh... I have many questions, and since we are here together, I'll ask you, of course, about the lunch tomorrow. But one last one Is it possible to imagine a uh, self sustaining process that, that is impregnable? So, uh, probably impossible. A self, a self sustaining process where there would be no way out of it by. Uh... Uh... Uh, just, uh, that's 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 a good question. So, in the earliest article by Fabien Wallef, the very first ones, well, he has a reduced sort of models, and since they are simplified, what he has cases where basically uh, he obtains a limit cycle which is stable. So, in he has cases where he has, it's in a way, a self sustaining process, uh, in a way derived approximately from Navier Stokes. So, he in a reduced sort of models. With some simplifications, he ends up with uh, with a uh, with a system of equations where the the, say the turbulent state is a limit is a limit cycle and it's purely attractive. So is, there is no way out of it. So there are there are these cases. So maybe if one tried to figure out what is the difference between let's say what you have in a DLS of uh, pipe flow or plaquette flow where you can exit the self self sustaining process and this simplified model. Well, you cannot exit the self sustaining process. Maybe you can uh, find a way to, uh, to have a situation where you cannot exit the self sustaining process. Where you cannot. And there is no, and it makes no sense to imagine that as the Renault summer goes to infinity, you might find yourself in such a situation. Uh, I don't think that could be reasonable because what people have, they, well, they have many different ways of doing things. The people are trying to estimate. What is the typical kinetic energy uh, in the separatist between laminar and turbulent flow? Mm -hmm. So people have done, done dichotomy and find uh, uh, the minimal energy on the, on the, on the dichotomy and uh, vary the Reynolds number. And they have done minimal seeds and vary the Reynolds number in the computation of the minimal seeds and done all these things. And what they see is that this typical energy, this, the, the typical energy on the separatrix decreases with the Reynolds number. So, and it decreases fast, but it doesn't seem to go to zero exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, but then at some of number, this difference, this typical energy is so small that it's basically stopped making sense. So I think that's at some level, maybe, maybe 100,000, this typical kinetic energy is so, so small because it decreases like one over Reynolds square or cube, depending on the way you calculate it. It becomes so small that it doesn't really make any sense to talk about, uh, uh, a finite amplitude uh, perturbation being, being necessary. So that's then uh, at this Reynolds number, you. Thank you, Zohar. I will not uh, take more time. Uh, we will talk later. Okay. Uh, let's see if there is someone uh, else who would like to ask some other questions. So I remind you that you can just unmute your mic or 
report the question in the chat. Okay, this doesn't seem to be to be the case. So thank you, Johanna, once again for for the uh, seminar today. Uh, thank you all the participants for having joined the, the webinar, and hope to see you soon uh, next time, next okay. uh, this week. Thank you for all for your attention and for the invitation. Thank and you. Good evening to all. Bye.